How beautiful it is for brothers and sisters to worship together in harmony. Brothers and sisters, we are welcome to this service to crown our month of family month activities for this year. Let us come before the Lord, worship and fall down before the Lord our maker, for he is our Lord, our God. He is the sheep, we are the sheep of his pasture and the sheep of his hands. Let us come before him with meekness and in all humility confess our sins and then worship and praise him as we ought. Let us pray. The Lord has been merciful and gracious to us. He's taking care of us the whole year. And particularly for this family month, he's been with us in all our activities, in our goings out and in. We are here to say thank you we are here to say, to worship him. But let us be mindful, this is a holy God, a God in whom there is no sin. And as we come before him, we deserve, in all meekness and in all humility, to conf confess before him our shortcomings. Let us therefore pray to God, asking him for the forgiveness of all acts of omission the things we needed not to have done, but have done them. And also ask him for his forgiveness for the wrong things that we have done. He is a merciful God who has promised always to forgive the sins of those who come to him penitentially. And so, Father, your servants, your people, your children come before you in acknowledgement of all the good things that you have done for us in times past and even to now. And as we come before you to worship and give praise and adoration to you, we are still mindful of the fact that we are still human. We thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ, our Lord, whose blood sanctifies us. And as we give praise to you for that, we pray that you have forgiven us all the sins that we have committed knowingly, consciously, or unconsciously. Cleanse us so that our worship throughout this day will be acceptable to you. This and many other blessings we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Together we shall chant the Lord's Prayer. One accord and virtue will combine to lead us in praises and adoration, after which we will have the ministration by the children and the themes. Thank you. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Let's do it better for Jesus. It's to Jesus. Amen. It's an offering, a clap offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The King of Kings is here and we want to honor him with the fruit of our lips. Amen. As many as can, kindly rise to your feet as we do this together. Before we sing, you just want to spend a minute to offer him your own praise. We're still in the mood of prayer. We want to adore him for who he is. You're worthy, Jesus.
Can we give the Lord a mighty clap offering in the house? Amen. 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 Do I have some believers in the house? Do I have some believers in the house? Can we give the Lord a shout of praise? Oh, if that was for me, I want us to do a better one for Jesus.
Amen. Please take your seats. Glory to God. Glory to God. The owner of Honda Civic GW 1043-12 should please attend to his, his or her car. Honda Civic GW 1043. Please attend to your car. Dash 12. We will now welcome the leaders and the children for the administration. school time and youth and um, young adults and teens. We make a lot of noise. Isn't it? Youth, give me a big shout. Hallelujah. And I'm happy to see all of you. Our sister will say a poem and then all of us, Mr. Okoa will project and we will all say someone in a very special way. Thank you. Good morning, Akari Church. We are the children of this great family. A family, a family that is one. But then we are many parts that blend. Anglican, Methodist, Presbyterian. Coming together in an entity. All of us together under one umbrella. One baptism, one faith, one savior. Showing off the nature of our father, our God, who is three in one. One, yet diversified. In this, his will is satisfied. You know, the ultimate focus is Christ. Paths varied, yet intertwined. Commissioned by the Most High. Serving faithfully side by side. Not one of us is less esteemed. No, not one of us is less esteemed. Not one of us is less esteemed for the differences in our liturgies. But the saving work of Christ is that which binds us to the Father's heart. So it is our heartfelt prayer, should be our heartfelt prayer, that all our different flags bow to the banner of Christ Jesus, our Lord and, and Master. It is our heartfelt and most cherished hope that our dear church, our Crowded Church, will grow and glow as his love knits us into a home. God bless us all. God bless Akari Church. Amen. 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 Mr. Okwe, we are waiting. With Jesus in the family, then you respond, happy, happy home. With Jesus in the family, happy, happy home. The family that prays together stays together. Mr. Okwe, please. The family that prays together stays together. With Jesus in the family, happy, happy home. The family that prays together stays together. The family with love and joy stays together. The family that worships together stays together.
Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, but walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which heals his foot in season, and whose seed does not wither. Whatever he does presses. Though so the wicked, they are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the day of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Amen. 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 So the family that loves the Lord reads the Bible. The family that loves the Lord reads the Bible. The church that keeps together prays together. The church that keeps together prays together. So we are all going to stand up. And they are going to lead us to sing, bind us together. Testament and the reading and the epistle. The Old Testament reading and the epistle. Hear the word of the Lord as it is written in Isaiah chapter 51 verses 1 to 6. Isaiah chapter 51 verses 1 to 6. Listen to me, who, you who pursue righteousness and who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were cut, and to the quarry from which you were hewn. Look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who gave you birth. When I called him, he was only man, one man, and I blessed him and made him with many. The Lord will surely comfort Zion, and will look with her compassion on all her ruins. He will make her deserts like Eden, her wastelands like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the sound of singing. Listen to me, my people. Hear me, my nation. Instruction will go out for me. My justice will become a light to the nations. My righteousness draws near speedily. My salvation is on the way, and my arm will bring justice to the nations. The islands will look to me and wait in hope for my arm. Lift up your eyes to the heavens. 
Look at the earth beneath. The heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment, and its inhabitants will die like flies. But my salvation will last forever. My righteousness shall never fail. This is the word of the Lord. Nehawa <laughs> Ne kwa neche Abraham kesa, meni amni ne jele, meni mi che Abraham le, eko meni, shimi jole ni mi ha ewo shwe baba o, e jake, yo waba ashe je Jerusalem mi, e ba ashe je he fe ni e fe ko e ko le ami, e ba ha e nga le no a chotamo idi, ne e shiang le ba a chotamo, yo wa den che abo, den ba so ke mi fwe mo ke, Nyamoke shida lalai, mambi, ne bwami toi. Mimang, ne fia toi, ne hami, e jake, mimba wumla, ni mi jale sanei, a chola, a hamaji majinle. Mi den yu wala hewe mo bele e benke eta. Mi yu wala hewe mo le ba ajiko mi, mi den che ma ye maji majinle ano. Nisho na shiko jin, le min kwe mi be, ni mi, ni ame hie mi kami he walele no. Yo ne wa ne hi ne kwa nwe ke nwe shipo ni yo nwe shishihun e ja ke nwe ba la ji tamo la su ni shipo le ba su tomo atade ni eno gbo me agbo tomo adodo ji se mi yi wa la he mole an shike ate na mi po mole be na be no mo re mole ne Hear the word of the Lord, as it is written in Colossians chapter 1, verse 1 to 14. Colossians chapter 1, verse 1 to 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to God's holy people in Colossae, the faithful brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father. We always thank God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all God's people. The faith and love that spring from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which have already heard in the true message of the gospel that has come to you. In the same way, the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world, just as it has been doing among you since the day you you heard it and truly understood God's grace. You learned it from Epaphras, a dear fellow servant, who is faithful, who is a faithful minister of Christ our Lord on our behalf, and who also told us of your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through the Spirit through all, through all the wisdom and the understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please Him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with power according to His glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. This is the word of the Lord.
Amen. And then same panel, you be one of police form a tea bag, which jump back, a good sea do nine. Mamma in tear, right, yes. For our own number, young for a person, a year, Christo, yes, so much for any unreal Timothy. Had you come out here for our war, Colossi, any and real more, or ye Christo, mu, Gidipo, or Domine as soon be a pea, a young uncle for and come. Yet, young uncle, young ready, yes, Christo, Ledger, as the da young empire, ye bore a mamma, a mu, if you say. Yatimo, Christo, Yesu, a mujidi, any mudra, mudito, a hotifu, nina, and in dasua, a daho, a mu, a mu, mu, or sro, a sempano, no quasem, a martino, in tea, a sempano, na, a tumu, senior, a wood be a singing answer, na, a resua, ba, na, a co, a cosso, a new, senior, a tea wall, a moon, and so, a if we da muti na mudu nyangu pon edum no pare emuno seni amusai seni amusia no if we yeng ewra kwa dopo epekra a oye mu Christo suma fo no kwa fo a ubeyi ne hum hum emudo achre yeng enso enchre enchre no wangu hum efumu wo e wo eyin ti yen so e fi da ye ti no ye nyae un ti so empa ibo eni ostra se ni pemu ehun enye mu mu ma hunhun enyina eni enti ase enyina imu na mona nti o se ni e fata awurade no ai so na ni kra na mo so adwuma na na mo na mo na mo mo so adwuma a dumapa in ne mu abba. Na when ye ako o nyanko pon hu enim de emu. Na u di tu mi na ashemu. Senya un senya na nu nyam senya na nu nyam tu mi de etinu. Ako bwasito any abu to train na emu. Na mudi any je adda a jano ashe. Wama ya fata a mu tifu afe ya dienu. I will hire more and no, I say. Now, we young Epi is soon to me, I say, at the young Abba, the Dobber, I hear near a moon. Or no, a moonna, your yah or chia, and name whom ye a perfume, and a ready assume. Let us with a gladsome mind praise the Lord for his kind. The next team, MHB. 18. As we sing standing, our children will leave us for their studies. MHB 18.
in honor of the Anglicans and Methodists, we shall remain standing as we read the gospel. Our gospel today can be found in Matthew's gospel, chapter 16. We read from verse 13 through 20. The gospel according to Saint Matthew, chapter 16, from verse 13 to 20. Let us hear the word of the Lord. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hate will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the word of the Lord. Please take your seats. The preacher for today is our own Reverend Father, Reginald Lawson. But before he delivers the sermon, we invite the two of our music teams to minister to us. Instruments of Praise and the Praise Team. They will minister to us before the sermon is delivered. Shall we welcome them as they come? Yeah. Hallelujah. It's an honor to be in the house of God once again. We want to minister a song unto the glory of God. And would love if you'd sing with us. It says, Welcome to the family. And we're glad to have you with us to share your life with us. Amen. Amen. Amen.
to share your life with us as we grow in love and the we always be to you but I'm glad as we always to be strong and to be family to lean on each other to hold our hands so we be strong amen. amen now let me greet i am fine thank you good morning do we have a crowd church main here a crowd church manet and a crowd church to do Oh, they are there. Wow. Beautiful. We thank God for this morning and we thank him for bringing us thus far in our family month. May love continue to grow. My little surprise is that for all the three congregations gathering, our sanctuary is still not too full. Where are the rest? Where are the rest of the members of the family who must be held together? They are online. The song just says we need to hold our hands here and pray together. Well, by God's grace, you have come this far, and may I, and also on behalf of the entire planning team for the family month, the officers of council and the council and clergy, first off, render an apology to you for the change in venue we had when the change was done from the main act hall back to the sanctuary. People wondered, why are we moving? All things work together for good. And so the change is not to our defect, but all to our glory. Amen. And we thank God also for your life, for you beautifully dressed in your African Kente traditional wear, all to give thanks and grace to God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Beloved in God, today I speak on that theme, qualities of a great family or qualities of a great home. Our theme for the month of August, the family month, has been the transformation life, the church family at the crossroads. And we have walked through lessons of biblical foundations of a Christian home, contemporary challenges of a Christian home, basic foundations and disciplines of a home, among others, being authentic and how a Christian home should be. Today we share us for ourselves as a family some pointers that God requires of us. A few steps we must take as a church, that is a family, and how to grow from there. And I base my text on the foundation text of Colossians 1, 1 through to 14. And for everything shared and the music sung and hymns rendered to us, I'll try and put them in that summarized bulleted forms. And I'm hoping and praying that the Christian Education Group will be able to develop these pointers into a full study material. So we study as a church family as we grow and go in God's word. What makes a family great? What qualities are there for a church to stand as a great church? And also in the song we just sang before the sermon, what are there for us to know? In verse 1 of Colossians chapter 1, it says that for a family to stand as a great family or as a great church, first off, is the faith it holds in Jesus the Christ. If your faith is in Christ, if my faith is in Christ, and that becomes a foundation for our growth as a saving faith of the knowledge of Jesus and the sonship of his Savior, then we are on our way to know that our faith cannot be shaken. The foundation is firm. And we hold on as one people in Christ, for Christ, and with Christ. If every one of us here seated this morning has that saving faith in Christ Jesus, then we have again laid a proper foundation onward to become a great church. Because for everything we do or say, our reference points will be on Christ. Second point is from verse 4 through to verse 8. That for a church to be a great church, it has love for all the saints. And truly from the processional hymn to the song just sung before the sermon, all speaks about love. Welcome to the family where we share and care and show love for and with each other. And in that, may I read a text we received yesterday night when the families were formed and given the WhatsApp group, name omitted, other church omitted. I'm so grateful for the family and for this month. I moved from a church to join Accra Church, only seeking for a spiritual home where I can grow spiritually. But the church seemed not welcoming, so I sought to look for a different place. After two years, I heard that there's a family month via the social media, and people can register to display their words at the family business fair. I registered and came. To the glory of God. For the first time in so many years, people in Accra Church showed me love. I got so much love at my stands, I forgot of myself, I was selling. I'm grateful to God. This is now my home, and I shall never go anywhere. Thank God for Accra Church. Thank God for the family month. And thank God for the love shown to me at the business fair. I thought you were clapping better for the Lord, not for me. Beloved in God, when a church is to stand and to stand firm as a great church, we all must beautifully and consciously grow in that genuineness of love. The yakape, the filio, and whichever love Christ has demonstrated to us, first off as a church, the agape love must flow amongst us and with others because we are built on Christ and the saving faith of Christ is to serve in love, we as a church must grow in love. How loving are we? How loving have we been? How well have you even known the one sitting to you this morning? Apart from those you know already. To do for anyone, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm sorry by a year. I did not order so. Anyone, yes, sir. I'm sorry by a year. Yeah, did you know? Say, I'm sure Christo. That's all my tree is finished. Can Jesus Christo? I was so money there. It must come from the foundations of Christ. 
because you are now all here, I have to satisfy all corners for the Tudians and the Monetites. The Monetites are the British church. No, they are the Americans. Here is the British. And in that love, Christ seeks that we must see ourselves as saints rather than seeing ourselves as sinners. When we show the love of Christ unto others who are in church with us, we don't look at them as sinners any longer, but for the saving Christ, work of Christ on the cross that has saved yourself and brought me into that saving light, we must transfer that light to others to be seen as saints, not to be judged as sinners. For Christ holds us in his life. Third point or third quality is that for a church to be a great church or a great family, in verse 5 of Colossians chapter 1, it says that it must hold on to the faith towards the future. Our faith towards the future is our faith not only living on earth, but also transcending to dwell with Christ in eternity. How do you say it? Future. Okay, trans translate for them. And so our faith must be rooted in the works of Jesus the Christ who died and rose again and has assured us that all those the Father has given to him, none shall be lost, but he shall bring all back unto himself on the day when we are to account. Accra Church, where lies our faith and where do we draw our faith and how well are we looking forward towards the future? Are we looking with expectation of hope and love? Are we praying that God will continue to hold us even after life after here so we join with him in eternity? Point number four of a great church. In verse 6 of Colossians chapter 1, it says the great church must have understanding of God's grace as the goodness and grace of God that has brought us this far. And this was done by Jesus Christ who paid for all of our sins on the cross. The church has been cleansed. The church must therefore grow to bear fruit. If our faith in God rests in the assurance of God's grace in us, then we must begin to bear. Anyone who doesn't bear fruit, money are Are we bearing fruit? As a church of God, a crowd church bearing fruit. Are we showing that goodness of God in our lives so others can testify of us that we are a fruit bearing church? And point number five as a church which stands to be a great church must have servant leaders. Verse 7 of Colossians chapter 1. Seven leaders who teach rights, teach the faith, teach truth, teach in love, and teach by the grace and giftings of God. Seven leaders in a church or in a family are those who humble themselves to take up the cross so they can nurture and regenerate the spirit that Christ has demonstrated and deposited in us. Servant leadership is that you let all know that the Christ that dwells in me also dwells in you. And for Christ who can go that low to wash the feet of disciples, a great church must have those who deny themselves and go to the point to rescue its members so we can wash their feet, we can help heal their wound, and we can feed them spiritually, physically, emotionally, and mentally. Jesus the Christ spoke in the gospel and asked the question, who do people say I am? And I'll ask us this question. Who do people say the Akrari church is? Is it a church that is loving? A church that has seven leaders? A church that understands the goodness and grace of God? Is it a church that brings honor to other saints? Beloved, the seed factor or seed point in having a great church as in verse 9, where it emphasizes that for a church to be great, for a church to stand, Solomon, we must be deeply rooted in prayer. A church that prays together stays together. The family that prays together stays together. As our church, a praying church, or our church has become a church of social gathering. When there's a gathering which is social, we want to participate. But when the gathering must call on to prayer, we want to stay off with a thousand and one excuses. It's our church, a praying church. For a church to be well-grounded, I repeat, and for a church to be focused 
on that thing which Christ has brought to us as a Kari church. That church needs to take a great amount of prayer over a great amount of time to bring about a great change. Are we a praying church? Or we assume we are praying? Are we a church that collectively will gather together and say, let us pray over a thing. What does the Lord want the Accra Richard to do and to be? What does he want us to stand up for? When our prayer is not deeply rooted in the works of Christ, almost every one of us will think we have a clue and solution on how the church will run. It is only prayer that brings the solution right from the roots. Are we praying? We will rise and pray. And I finish on the last point. In verse 10 following, that a great church, a great family, must be that church which has transformational disciples. Transformational disciples. In the reading of the Colossians chapter 1 verse 10, it instructs that everyone who has received of the Lord Jesus Christ must also be able to go there and impact. It says, in part in our business, in part in patience, in part with the joy you have received, and in part by doing good, kind things, and also for others. And all the while, you will learn to know God better and better. Are we transformational disciples? Is our business touching society positively? Is our life speaking unto others and drawing them unto Christ? Is the way we speak becoming transformational so others can testify this man, this woman has changed. And for the change in him, I need to seek that change. Are we being transformational? Or let me ask again the question I asked two months back. Are we receiving everything from Christ in the word of God and all we do as a church and yet keeping them on the pews? We walk out of here to do what everybody is doing. And so the world cannot see the lights in the church. Shall we go out of here to transform a life? Will we go out of here to set businesses on Christ's principles? Shall we step out of here to let our school shine to the glory of God? And may we, as we hold our hands together in love, rise as disciples of Christ, transformed with his blood and his word, speaking to each other in love and conducting ourselves for the grace factor that God has given us. And as we march on, may Christ, who is above all for all and in all, pour unto us his goodness and grace now and forevermore. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Great church is rooted in the faith of the apostles. Shall we all stand and affirm our faith in the Apost Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead and ascended into heaven. He sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. The choir will minister a song to us.
Thank you, choir. As the family of God, we have assembled and it is our duty. In fact, scripture exhorts us to be praying for kings and those who rule in the affairs of the state. We are to pray for our nation and for world peace. And so we will be entering into a moment of intercessory prayers. We will sing from the Methodist team the first stanza only of MHB 335. 335. We will sit singing after which we will enter into a moment of prayer. Pass me not. O oh, gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. The first stanza only as we prepare to pray. Let us bow in prayer. Let us pray for world peace. We are individuals bonded together into a nation. And as a nation, we form part of the world community. Whatever happens in other parts of the world affects us as well. We are all aware of the warring situations around the globe. At least we know of Russia and Ukraine and the others. Let us pray to God for his intervention. As individuals, as prayers, people of God, let us pray to God who listens to the prayers of his children. Let us also bring our nation, Ghana, before God. We know God loves Ghana and has blessed us in so many ways. But you know the situation in which we find ourselves. Let us pray to God for his intervention. Let us pray to God for those into whose hands the affairs of this state is given to be governed. I mean the president and the government of, of the day. Let's pray that the Lord himself will grant them every wisdom and grace that they need to be able to build a Ghana that will honor God. Pray also for the other arms of government, the legislature, that laws that are made in our country will be pleasing to God. 
that there will be cooperation between the executive and the legislature that our country can move forward in a way that pleases God. Let us pray to God. And let us also pray for the judiciary, for the role they play, that there will be justice and fairness in the land for all manner of people. Let us continue also in prayer as we pray for Ghana, for the citizens of our nation. Particularly the workers in the state. That they will do their work in such a manner that will contribute to the building of our nation. That Ghana will be the paradise we all expect to see. So all the blessings that God has given us, we can enjoy them and continue to praise God. Pray for the citizens, for the workers, and for the numerous unemployed people in our country. Pray that the Lord himself will open a way for them somewhere. That they can make their contribution to the building of our state. Let us now pray for the Church of Christ in Ghana. And especially for our own church, the Accra Ridge Church, and the constituent denominations. Let us pray to God that the church will be enabled to become the light and the salt of the earth, as Jesus has said it, it is. Let's pray that the church will not be lost in its vision the goal of its service to the world. That the light will continually shine and give hope to the hopeless. Pray for all those leaders of our churches, clergy and lay, that they will never lose sight of the Great Commission to reach out to those who are yet to know Christ. And so to apply the resources that God grants them for the salvation of souls. And pray also for all the members of our churches that each and every one of them will be very faithful to Christ. First and foremost, as we have said, a great church is rooted in the faith, the faith of Christ. That it will not only be a social fellowship, but beyond that, it will be a faithful fellowship serving God and serving people. Pray to God that the Holy Spirit will be poured on his church continually at all gatherings so that we will not be led by the flesh and what we see with our eyes. And that everything that we do and plan to do will be guided by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit himself.
pray that the pure gospel will be preached everywhere in every church. That people will truly be led to Christ and their faith will be built in him. Lastly, for now, let us pray for the sick and all manner of persons who are faced with all manner of difficulties and challenges in this life. You can particularly mention the name of a sick person you know of and pray for the person, trusting that the Lord answers our prayers and he will touch them wherever they are. Pray for the sick. The sick amongst us in our own households. The sick amongst us in our church and our churches. The sick in the community, particularly those whose conditions are considered as incurable. Pray that the Lord himself will intervene. Praying for the needs of others, let us also pray for people who have become immigrants in other countries and are undergoing difficult situations, some losing their lives as a result. Pray that the Lord himself will intervene in this world of ours, that the wrongs of this world will be righted and people will be able to live in their homes in peace and give glory to God. Almighty and great God, we come before you with our prayers, always knowing that you will listen to our prayers because you have commanded us to pray to you in times of need. This morning we have poured forth our cries before you for the peace of this world. We pray that there will be world peace, a peace, a world in which we can live to give glory to you as a result of the blessings that we receive from you. This morning we have also prayed for our mother, uh, mother Ghana, and we pray that, God, you will grant us stability in our nation. And I've prayed for those into whose hands authority is given to govern the affairs of this state. We pray for your wisdom for them in everything that they do. At all their meetings, guide them with your own Holy Spirit. We have also prayed for the other arms of government, the legislature, as well as the judiciary. We've prayed for the workers of our land. We pray for the numerous unemployed youth in our country. We pray that, Lord, you yourself will intervene in a special way so that Ghana will enjoy the rich resources that you have given us as a people. Father, we have prayed also for your church, the Church of Christ, the church for which Christ poured his blood. We pray that you visit us again and again. Pour your Holy Spirit on us so that we will come alive and be always conscious about our calling the salvation of souls, that we will not be misled, that our light will continually shine in this dark world, and the darkness cannot overcome it. Lord, rule in your, the affairs of your church. We come to you as individuals with challenges. There are many of our members, our, 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 our friends in other places who are going through difficult situations, particularly those who are sick in hospitals, 
and in other places. People have become migrants, even sometimes in their own land. You bring all this before you, Lord, and pray that you yourself will find a way to grant us the peace that we need. So as long as we live, we will have always the cause to say thank you for what you continue to do for us. This and many other blessings we bring before you. We trust that you have answered our prayer, so we thank you for hearing us in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hands up, please. It is now time to do a special assignment, and to do that, we have the chair of council in the person of Miss Abigail Armour. She's here to do something special. She will, tell it, she will let you know what she's coming here to do. For the chairman, I, th I think the applause, applause was that week. It was very weak. Yes, chair. Thank you. Good morning, church. You are all looking resplendent in your kente and traditional way. And it's so wonderful to see all of us participating in this Thanksgiving service of the Family Month. Amen. We started off the Family Month with um, an exegesis by um, Reverend Father Lawson on the theme of Family Month. We went through a series of activities. Some of the activities couldn't be held, but that notwithstanding, we continued to follow on with the program. We also invited a, a number of resource persons to deliver um, some messages to us to expound on how we can build our rich church family. We had various dimensions of talks challenges, we talked about national development, and then we also organized yesterday's business fair. And we are really grateful to all those who helped to bring all these activities together. Planning a program like this is not easy at all. And we know that some of the people who were helping plan the programs also have their own work to do. But they took time of their busy schedules and they helped to put everything together. And we know that there are people whom we usually call silent workers. We haven't heard this word in the church for a very long time because for some time now, we have not done anything with our silent workers. But we know that the silent worker is a person who works behind the scenes, who is not, not normally seen behind the microphone engaging with the congregation in various forms and guises. But we know you are all there helping to bring it all together. So on behalf of the planning committee, I stand here to show our appreciation for all the work that has gone into Family Month. The program itself was a real innovation. We've always had a Family Month, but we saw a little more expansion and we saw the need for us to come together so that we'll work together and bring our skills and our talents together. And we saw a lot of that yesterday, especially at the cooking competition. Some um, families started with one person doing the cooking, but gradually people joined in the various families and helped to put it all together. And we had a wonderful time yesterday with the children and then the um, vendors who came to sell their wares and also to interact with us. And so on behalf of council, on behalf of the clergy, and especially on behalf of the planning committee, they didn't want me to um, um, project any particular group, but I think that it would be nice for us to see who are behind, who were behind the planning of all these things that we participated in. So please, planning committee members, could you kindly come forward so that we'll all applaud you for the wonderful work that you did. Please come forward. I know you didn't want this, but 
It's not been easy, and we know you did. You worked so hard. So, planning committee members, please come forward. And Father, Father is the chief. Was the chief planner. Yes, yes, Father. Please come forward. No, you can't go back. <laughs> so, beloved members, these are the members who form the microcosm of the people who put this program together. They really worked hard. So please, a thunderous applause. Your applause is not loud enough. A thunderous applause. A thunderous applause. Thank you so much. So we want to also declare the results of the cooking competition. Good morning. We are, we are one big family, God's family. And, and just as in our scripture reading, it says, he was one man, but God made him into a family. So it is actually God's family. But we have divided the God's family into five parts. One is called the loving family. And you all, are, some of you are part of loving family, the peaceful family, the kind family, the joyful family, the patient family. All right, they are there. And we have wristbands for everybody. So if you are part of it, um, you are allowed to have a wristband and we will organize to let you have that. Those who have it can put it on so that we can see who is where. Um, and then we have also put everybody in a WhatsApp group. We know not everybody is on WhatsApp, but that's a convenient way for us to see how we can put the families together. And so I'm sure you'll be seeing some information on your phone on that. So here are the results for yesterday's inter-family cooking competition held at the Fellowship Center. And it was a jollof cooking competition using Ghana rice. <laughs> and it was awesome. Um, in fact, the judges um, tasted the food, and you could see that every place, they were spending a lot of time there, so every place was good. Um, but we graded each family on teamwork, execution, appearance, and taste, and put the marks together. And here are the results. There were five families, but two families tied in the fourth position with 95 marks. And with a round of applause, let us congratulate for the fourth position, the kind family and patient family. The third position, with 98 points, was taken by the Peaceful Family. The second family, with 102 points, was the Loving Family. And finally, with 110.5 points, was the joyful family. That was truly, truly wonderful. We tasted some good jollof. So we hope to make an improvement upon it in the coming years. We would also like all silent workers to kindly rise so that we'll give you an applause. You know yourselves, you, you are behind the scenes, you don't come out in the open, you are not preaching, you are not teaching, but you are either a sites person or a service leader, and you do so many things for us behind the scenes. Please, the tech team, the tech team is, a, they are silent workers, they are here in their numbers, so please, Kindly rise wherever you are so that we'll give you a round of applause. Without you, we won't count our monies. Our organists, our silent workers, would like you also to rise. You supported us at all the services, all activities. The music groups, you were there, you sang. 
to us and would like to acknowledge that you have done an, a yeoman's work. Please, kindly rise. So, and I think this one is a whole church, oh, because you are all silent workers. So please rise and give yourselves a round of applause. We also have the teens and the youth who went on camp. In July, the uh, youth were on camp, at camp, and then in August, the teens were also at camp. The young adults also helped to um, organize and plan these two camp activities. We'd like to acknowledge you, and we'd like you all to stand so that we can give you a round of applause. Our youth, our youth, budding youth organizers, yes. We thank God for your lives at Tudu, at Manet, and then at Ridge. Thank you so much. And also, shall we give our clergy a round of applause? It couldn't have been done without them and without their prayer support. Thank you all, and God bless you. Shall we please stand? We are the body of Christ. In one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. Let us pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us all wave each other the sign of peace. I'll place it. It is now time for offering. And we encourage all of you to give generously, for God loves a cheerful giver. God bless you as you come with a grateful heart.
to the Lord's table. Let us sing MHB 50. MHB 50. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as we draw closer to the Lord's table, let us pray for our brothers and sisters who are celebrating their birthday. We, command, Commander Sogbojo, 80 years, Auntie B, Auntie Augusta, Sister Nora, 
23 years, a sister who wants to remain anonymous, Auntie Stella, Mirami, and Carmen, and a member who wants to remain anonymous, and a couple who are celebrating their first anniversary in marriage. Let us pray that the good Lord will open the gates of heaven and pour his blessings upon all of them. O Lord, hear our prayer. Let our cry come unto thee. Let us remember and pray for souls that have been called to rest. Let us pray for Roland Joseph Edgar Brain, 11th anniversary of death, Mrs. Comfort Usu Ajeman, first anniversary of death, and Carl Yoko, London, first anniversary of death. Let us pray. Absorb, O oh Lord, we see thee the souls of Roland Joseph Edgar Brain, Comfort Usu Ajeman, and Carl London, from every bone of sin, that in the glory of the resurrection they may raise amidst thy saints and elect unto newness of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, whose nature and property is ever to have mercy and to forgive, receive our humble petition for Roland Joseph El Gabriel, Comfort Uso Ajeman, and Carl London. We pray that you grant them a place of refreshment, the blessedness of rest, and the brightness of your light through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. And let my perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, by the great mercy of God, rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, before we draw closer to the altar of God and offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, let us call to mind sins committed against God and sins committed against our brothers and sisters. Let us confess our sins before Almighty God as you say after me. I confess to Almighty God. I confess to Almighty God. And to you, my brothers and sisters. And to you, my brothers and sisters. That I have sinned. That I have sinned. In thought. In thought. Word. Word. And deed. And deed. In what I have done. In what I have done. In what I have failed to do. In what I have failed to do. I ask God Almighty. I ask God Almighty. To forgive me all my sins. To forgive me all my sins. May Almighty God have mercy upon all of us. Forgive us all our sins and bring all of us to newness of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, which for us becomes the bread of life. Blessed, uh, blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, which for us becomes our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Father Almighty. May the Lord receive the sacrifice of our hands to the praise and glory of his name, both to our benefit and that of all his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Sanctify, we see thee, O Lord, the gifts which we offer as we commemorate family month and cleanse our hearts by the enlightening of your Holy Spirit, and bless us with the virtues that will help each one of us to promote the unity in our family. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord is here. The Spirit is here. Lift up your hearts. To lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise. It is very much right and abandoned duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Especially on this family Sunday, as we give you thanks, Almighty God, we pray that you pour upon us as a church the gift of patience, the gift of love, the gift of gentleness, the gift of forbearance, and help us to build a Christ church as one family. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we loud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Place it. 
accept our praise and thanksgiving through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, let these gifts of bread and wine be for us the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. The night before we signed over to suffering and death, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ took bread, gave you thanks and praise, broke the bread, gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which is shared for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this, as often as you shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us together proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memory of our redemption, O Father, in this celebration of bread and wine, recalling the death, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Sanctify this bread and wine so that for us becomes the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the drink of new and ending joy in Him. Sanctify us in duality also. And help us to worship you in unity, constancy, and peace. And that at the general resurrection, the last day, we may be found acceptable in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, Blessing and honor and, and, glory and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us now pray with confidence the prayer our Savior Christ has taught us. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body. We do not to share in the body. Jesus, Lamp of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to this supper.
Our first communion hymn is Methodist Hymn 528, 528. Continue with A and M three hundred and twenty two.
continue with the Presby Himerary, 
continue with A and M supplementary eleven. A and M sub eleven. Continue with the Methodist Sin Book, numbered 400, MHB 400.
let these three things abide in you, faith, hope, and charity. But the greatest of them all is charity. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious and everlasting Father, we are very grateful to you for feeding us with the sacrament of the body and blood of your son Jesus Christ as we celebrate family month. Bless each one of us with a gift of love, unity, understanding, forbearance, and patience. And help each one of us to daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until we are called to everlasting kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Prayer after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Please sit. It's time for the notices. Today is Sunday, the 27th of August, 2023, the 12th Sunday after Trinity. Bible study. In-person Bible study continues every Sunday during the 7.30 a.m. service and at 9.45 a.m. to 9.15 a.m. If for any reason you are unable to join the 7.30 lesson, you are encouraged to join the 9.45 session. You are invited to join our midweek morning meditation here at the Ridge this and every Wednesday from 6.30 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. Prayer meeting. You're all invited to the congregational church-wide weekly prayer sessions this and every Friday at 6 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. at the Ridge and Manet, respectively. Join Ghana Praise this and every Wednesday from 12 noon to 1 p.m. Members are encouraged to drop their prayer requests in the prayer boxes provided at the main exit and entry points of the church. All church groups are kindly requested to present their budget and calendar of activities for 2024 to the administrative manager by close of work Friday, 15th September, 2023. It's the last Friday Sorry, it's the last family month and aviosi session this Wednesday, the 30th of August, 2023. The topic is the disciplines of a Christian home. The rich session will begin at 6 p.m. and speakers are Mr. and Mrs. Samuel Branfo, whilst Manet is at 7 p.m. and the speakers are Dr. and Professor Mrs. Obobi Sadako. Let's round up the family month in a wonderful way as we learn to fellowship. A note of gratitude from the family month committee. For your prayers at our behest, for entertaining our requests, for showing up and turning in morning, noon, and evening, for your suggestions and support, for cooking meals and playing sports, forwarding texts and notices, posting on your statuses. In filling forms and accepting bands, you've truly lent a Christ-like hand to knit our church into family, and we thank you wholeheartedly. Valedictory service schedules. For Reverend Andrew J. Tu Ojawu, the venue will be at Ridge on the 3rd of 
September at 6 p.m. To do, 3rd of September at 9.30 a.m. Ridge Contemporary, 10th September at 8.30 a.m. Manet, 17th September, 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. And at the Ridge, 24th September, 7.30 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. And for Reverend Kofi Ankama Samwa, Manet, 3rd September, 8.30 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. Ridge, 10th September at 6 p.m. Tudu, 10th September, 9.30 a.m. At the Ridge, 17th September, 7.30 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. And Ridge Contemporary, 24th September at 8.30 a.m. The congregation should kindly note that there will be a second offertory for Reverend Ujawu and Reverend Ankama Samwa on the 17th and 24th of September. The Harvest and Thanksgiving Committee requests all groups to nominate two members to represent the group as chairpersons during the Harvest Service on Sunday, the 5th of November. Names should be submitted to the administrative manager or Mr. Danny E. Mauyega by 30th September. The Christian Services Group thanks members of the church for gener generously donating to their Akrari Church Tertiary Education Scholarship Scheme. Contributions are still welcome and can be made at the Secretariat or via Mumu to 055-928-5896, 055-928-5896. The congregation should kindly note that deadlines for submission of notice and intercession is on Thursday at 4 p.m. Members are kindly encouraged to adhere to the above. Thank you for your understanding. The Methodist, the Methodist Church Ghana invites all well wishers in Akrari Church to a special launch and fundraising to support the construction of the 16-story Wesley Towers financing project on Wednesday, the 30th of August at 10 a.m. at Wesley Towers Auditorium. For further information, see Right Reverend S.K. Jabing the Methodist minister. This year's Pastors and Leaders Conference, organized by the Challenge Enterprises of Ghana, is scheduled for Monday the 4th to Thursday the 7th of September here at Akrari Church. Available at the bookstall is a book entitled In the Eye of the Storm, written by Justice Emil Francis Short. A copy sells at 200 Ghana CDs. Funeral announcement. The death is reported of Mr. Mark Atta Ousu. Pre-burial burial and file passed will be held at Christ the King Catholic Church Cantonments on Thursday the 7th of September at 7.30 a.m. Funeral mass and rites continues on Friday the 8th of September at 9 a.m at the VAG Clubhouse. The body will be conveyed to Kumasi for burial mass at the Holy Family Catholic Church on Saturday, the 9th of September at 9 a.m. He was the father of Reverend Father Eric Marko Usu, the former auxiliary priest of this church. Thank you. We come to celebrate some of our members living and passed on. The first group I like, um, and we're going to do the singing MHB 8-0, MHB 8-0, and in between we would acknowledge them. And when we sing stanza one, I like all the mamas of all the asophos to stand. They are sitting on the right. You haven't seen them together for a long time, however, we would love to celebrate them. So when we sing the first time that they will stand, 
we'll pray shortly for them. Then we will pray for, uh, when we sing stanza two, we'll ask the family of Auntie Comfort, Mrs. Comfort Hackman also to stand. And after that, we'll pray for them. And then when we sing stanza three, all those celebrating their birthdays will come forward so that they can receive the church's blessing. We'll give them the handkerchiefs. We'll pray for them. And then we would be closing. Is that okay? Excellent. MHB 80, stanza one, mamas will stand. Father, we are very grateful for giving us mamas to support the work of the clergy. It's not a mean task they do. When we are out, they are home. When we are home, they are there to support and to bless. Bless every work of their hands and let them prosper. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. unto yourself our mother Mrs. Comfort Hakman Osu and a year on you have looked after all of us, family and friends in church, you know how much she loved to serve you and to love you we pray that whatever legacy she left will continue to blossom may her family continue to prosper keep them together in health and strength, whatever their hands find doing, bless them and let them be able to live the life that Auntie Comfort would always be proud of we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Think stands up for they are still coming. They are quite a big blessing to all of us. Stands up for let's go. Father, we are very grateful for adding another year to the life of all these your members and your children, the fat of your family. We ask your special blessings on every one of them. Give them health, give them life, give them strength, touch their work, expand it, expand their coasts, whatever is their desire of their hearts. Lord, Lord, replenish and establish it. They've been looking to you for specific things. Meet everyone's need. 
and they'll come and testify according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Do this and let the church be blessed. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to give you a handkerchief, then we will sing lovingly for you, all right? So some from here, some from here. Let's, let's give it to them quickly. May I quickly and humbly announce to us that our service, please don't rush home. We'll all be in the gardens, in our families, for a light refreshment, a mini cocktail refreshment. Please don't run away. Look for your family. If you don't know them, check the band. I'm in the family of peace. Look for loving, joy, kindness, and patience. So please, we'll all go there, and then we'll have a light refreshment for everybody in church as a family. God bless you. The bishop takes over from here. Thank you all for your patience and waiting till now. The service is about to come to a close, two short announcements. The first one has to do with a donation that we have received from Honorable Hakman Usuajiman and the family. They are denoting, donated two polytanks to the church. This is in love and memory of his depart departed wife and matriarch, Mrs. Comfort Usu Ajiman. God bless you, Papa. <laughs> and then the last one is uh, our mom, Mrs. Frances Ademola, has a cake for all of us, symbolizing <laughs> family unity, which will be cut right here now. And clergy will join Mrs. Ademola to cut the cake, and then after that we will receive the, the take the final prayer and benediction. So shall the side persons help us at this time to bring the cake 
the family unity cake. <laughs> Mama Ademola, we humbly invite you to come forward. Abuzunya Hima to So all the clergy on your behalf will join her to cut the cake. I hope you agree to that. Thank you. Before the final prayer and benediction, can we please know if per chance there is anybody here worshiping with us for the first time? Even though we know we are all family. If there is anybody worshiping us today for the first time, can we see you? Raise a hand. Okay. Thank you. Let us now bow down our head and say a closing prayer. Commit yourself to God's care. Remember, there is one last activity for the family month on Wednesday. Pray that the Lord himself will remind you to participate in it. And pray also that the Lord will continue to unite us as a family. By holding fast to the faith in Christ. Living in love. And also offering ourselves to serve here in the church as well as in the society. That the light of God will shine in the society. Pray for God's protection over your life in the whole week ahead of you as we journey to and from your home to the workplace and to church, ask for his protection. Pray that this week also will be a peaceful one for Mother Ghana, that we can go about our daily duties in peace. Now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God the Father and of his Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. And may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all now and remain with us forevermore. Amen. 
Beloved in the Lord, I was here for the service is over. Let us go out in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Amen. The recessional hymn is 411, Head of Thy Church, Triumphant. Thank you. 